What's the crack lads? Welcome back to the channel and I wasn't going to do these because I think they're fairly self self-explanatory really but a lot of people have been asking me to do uh, training guides and a walkthrough or a breakdown or review whatever you want to call it of a couple of these cards that are in with the special epics. So obviously these are the picks of the pack. If you're spinning and you're trying to get Samuel Eto or Morientes or David Villa you might obviously get one of these guys, right? So there's a selection here of about eight players that are on top of these. Um, and there are a couple of, I wouldn't say hidden gems, because obviously Vinicius Jr. is not going to be a hidden gem. Griezmann's not going to be a hidden gem. But I would say that Munayin is definitely worth a, a look at, lads. His stats are incredible, and we will have a look at the ultimate build for him. But let's crack on. We're going to start, of course, with Vinicius Jr. It's a very solid card. It's better than his standard card. Uh, he's got everything that you could possibly want from a left-sided winger. He's a Roman flank, double touch, flip-flap, soul control, you know, the ball roll uh, will be able to be done with that. And then obviously you've got the true pass and you've got heel trick. He doesn't have any real shooting uh, sh uh, anime or player skills apart from rising shot. Um, but I think that you won't be shooting with Vinicius Jr., right? We talk about wingers. I'm going to have a video on wingers that you'll see, right? I have it, it's literally uploaded. So let's crack over to eFootballDB and we'll show you the build that we have for him. So this is the build that we've gone with for 29 levels of Vinicius. So his standard card is down at 26 levels, but this Vinicius card is way better, right? It's nearly plus one or plus two, plus one on everything and plus two in offensive awareness and ball control straight off the rip, right? So when we train him up, we're gonna pop five into shooting and passing, 10 into dribbling, 11 into dexterity and four into lower body. Now. Couple of things to talk about here, right? If you're using Vinny as your main starting left winger or left midfielder, I would probably pick where you want to play him. If you're playing him as a left midfielder, I would probably reduce this and up the passing um, to 77 low pass. I wouldn't have any shooting there or maybe one shooting there. Um, and if you're playing him as a left winger, you can kind of nearly get rid of the passing and go into the shooting to get 83 finishing. Or you could have 80 finishing and you could, you know, double up that dribbling to get that tight possession up. 96 acceleration. That is probably the build I would go with if I was looking for Vinicius Jr. either as an impact player or as my starting guy that was going to be coming on and emptying the tank and then basically being able to replace him. Because if you're not replacing your wingers, you're probably not doing enough work with them unless you've got really a lot of stats into stamina and speed, which you don't really need for the way the gameplay is at the moment, right? You know, case in point, you look at the new free Neymar that they got, his speed is so poor, he can still sprint, he can still run, he can still catch people, right? We've also got Griezmann and his build here. Griezmann is down as a 96 overall uh, with this build. And again, we have a similar decision to make with Griezmann. Do you shoot a lot with Griezmann? If you do, then this build is for you. He's down as a whole player. I would not be playing him as a 96 SS. I'd be playing him as an AMF, right? So the only two players I think you should be playing up front at the moment are either a target man with somebody with speed up front, such as a goal poacher, or else two goal poachers or a fox in the box and a goal poacher where it's kind of a rapid, um, quick base passing, right? If you are using Griezmann up front, I don't think he has enough of an engine. He's more of a kind of a slow base player. So AMF is perfect for him. Think of him like Messi, very similar player to Messi. So if you are going with that and you don't shoot a lot, I do shoot a lot with my attacking midfielders with curl shots and, you know, stunning shots and whatever. So I do want that finishing and that power. Um, but if you don't, and if you find yourself just kind of being an orchestrator, you can get rid of this, still have it at 80 and just boost up the passing to go to 87 low pass. And then you don't even need this much, but you could have 76 speed. So there's two quick versions of him there. We also have as well as, uh, as, well as that, we have Rafinha. Now the problem with Rafinha is that he's a one trick pony in terms of just pure power and speed. Whereas Vinicius has a couple of interesting and unique animations and stuff like that with his player ID. Rafinha is going to be a guy that is just a dime a dozen. Dembele is probably better than him. I would say Sané is better than him. Um, uh, I would say that there's a couple of players that are in his wheelhouse that are pretty similar to him. Now, that's not to say that if you spin him that he's not worth you know training up as we look here. He is a very, very good player with 96 acceleration, 86 balance, 90 ball control. 86 type possession is quite decent, but he doesn't really have any passing or uh, finishing stats that you can really write home about, right? So even though he's on A form, he's down as a prolific winger, I do think that Vinicius Jr. is a better option, you know, because you have that, okay, I can train him up and I can actually, you know, figure out a lot of stuff with him. Um, 
whether I want to shoot with him, whether I want to pass with him, right? Now, the pick of him we'll leave to the end is Munayin, but we will have a look at Raul de Tomas as well. Um, he's a deep line forward, so think Harry Kane. He comes deep, he can come attack a midfielder and, you know, be able to, you know, uh, pass the ball, bring others into the ball, into the game. He's got weighted pass, one-touch pass. He's also got knuckle shot, long-range shooting and acrobatic finishing. And he's got soul control. And, of course, he has one-touch pass and first-time shot, which is always nice. He's got amazing run as a play style as well, so he'll make those kind of darting runs, even though he's a deep line forward, every now and again. Not as good if you're if you're not playing with long ball counter, um, but he's definitely a guy that you could get in there if you wanted to. Now, we've popped 10 into shooting to bring his finish into 89. He's only an average striker, lads. I'll be honest. He's only a really, really average striker. Now, the pick of him is actually an old favourite of mine. Long-time viewers of my channel will know how much I love Munayin, lads. He's got his same face since Pez 16, I'd say, but he is an absolute demon. Now, this will rely whether you want to have him off the bench or if you want to start him, you probably will need a couple of additional skills, right? So one touch pass is a must if you're playing him as an AMF. I would play him as an AMF and we'll show you why, right? So when we actually go over to his card here, look at the amount that you can do with this card, right? So the two main important, most important stats at the moment for small base players that are under 175 CM or 180 CM are to have tight possession and balance. And his goes through the roof. On top of that, you're going to have 88 acceleration, 87 ball control, 90 dribbling, 74 finishing, 86 low pass. You can literally pick and choose how you want this guy to play, right? Now, if it was me, and you guys have watched me and how I play, I'm a very possession-based player, but I also like to do quick counters and be very defensively, um, you know, tight. So I play with long ball counter to keep deep, but I do hold the ball quite a lot for somebody that's playing with Jose Mourinho on my road to glory. So I do want to play that possession-based game. But I don't need, you know, Munayin to do everything. I know the, the, the job he's going to be doing. So I would probably take away his finishing completely. I don't need to be shooting with him. I can still finish a one-on-one -on -one quite easily with 70 finishing with the way the game is and the animations. But I would probably, if I was using Munayin as best as I could, I would probably try and get up that dexterity to 99 balance as best as I could. Now, I know you're not going to be getting any boosts in game or anything like that, but 99 balance on this card is going to be insane, right? I will have a video out on 99 overall ratings quite soon and stat ratings and stuff like that, but this is a very, very, very interesting card, right? If you don't want to go with the balance that high, right, and you want to say, right, I have enough at 85 acceleration, you can actually put his passing up into the 90 zone. You know what I mean? It's an incredible card. Really, really, really incredible card. If you're happy with 88 low pass, you can put his dribbling nearly all up into the 90s with the ball control. But I do feel that even though you don't need that speed, like you could take one away from the speed there and you have one there with the aerial strength, there's so much that you can do with this card that even at this build here, you can pretty much have him exactly where you want him with the dribbling, with everything. I mean, you can go into the 90 with the ball control, 94 type possession and 95 balance with 85 acceleration. That's an insane card. But if you're like me, you will know what you're getting out of Monain, and that is to kind of have like an Iniesta type player there. So let me know what you guys think. That is it for me. I know that a few people were asking about this. The other cards in the deck, lads, are not really that great, to be honest with you. They're just kind of random cards. I mean, Marino's not bad, um, and Jose is not too bad either. But yeah, if you are looking to spin for any of these, um, and you get one of these guys, I think Monain is definitely worth a look at. So that is it for me. I will talk to you later, lads. Please don't forget to subscribe.